Good morning, brothers and sisters of Melodi Atswane and of others who might be listening or, or, or watching with us. Uh, a very happy Valentine's Day to all of you. And as we gather together today to worship God and to hear God's message, uh, let's pray together. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forevermore. Amen. Congregation of the Lord, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from Jesus Christ the Lord. We're not going to sing together today, but we're going to um, go straight into our sermon. So let us pray before we read scripture that God will, will speak to us today uh, through, through the Bible as we read it and uh, think about it together. Let's pray. Merciful, mighty God, we thank you that in the name of Jesus Christ we can stand before you as confident children, the beloved children of God. We thank you for your eternal love for us that you showed in creation and that you showed in calling Abraham and his descendants, that you showed in caring for the earth, giving us rain. We thank you that you are the speaking God, that you kept on speaking through the prophets and through the priests and the, and the wise the wise men and women of Israel, that you spoke to us in the fullness of time through your word, Jesus Christ, and that through your spirit you are now making Christ real in us, so that we may become more and more in the likeness and the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we, day, we pray today, Lord, that you will speak to us in a very special way as we read scripture and think about it together as a congregation, that our lives may become more and more worthy of your holy name. In the name of Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it is Valentine's Day, and I'm going to read a few, a few passages from the Bible, a few small portions, instead of one passage today. So let's turn to Proverbs chapter 10. Only one verse in Proverbs chapter 10, and that's verse 12. Proverbs, more or less in the middle of the Bible, chapter 10, verse 12. Hatred stirs up conflict but love covers over all wrongs. Hatred stirs up conflict, but love covers over all wrongs. And then Proverbs 15, the same book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 18. A hot-tempered person stirs up conflict. But the one who is patient calms a quarrel. A hot-tempered person stirs up a conflict. But the one who is patient calms a quarrel. And then in the New Testament, 1 Peter, chapter 4, the first letter of Peter, chapter 4 from verse 7, and we're only going to read two verses there. 1 Peter, quite close to the end of the Bible, 1 Peter chapter 4, from verse 7. The end of all things is near. Therefore be alert and of sober mind, so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. We read only those 
small isolated verses of the Bible today to give us some light on Valentine's Day. So I have to and I want to preach about love today. Um, just from the passages that we've read to reflect on what love means in relation to our relationships with each other. In relation to romantic love and marriage and family life uh, mainly and not only how we should act towards each other and treat each other but also how we can grow and receive this love in order to share it with each other. So let me start first of all by, by looking at the passage that we've read in Proverbs 10. Proverbs 10 verse 12. Hatred stirs up conflict, but love covers over all wrongs. Now in this passage there's hate and love. Hatred and love are contrasted. And in many parts of the Bible you find this, that there are these two ways. We have this, the option to live the, the, to take the way of death or the way of life. Psalm 1, and all, all over the New Testament, turn away from and turn towards. Put off their old clothes, put on the new ones. There's, there are these two ways, the way of death and the way of life. Here it is the way of hatred and the way of love that are contrasted with each other. But it's important to understand, if you want to understand this verse, that both hate, hatred and love are not just feelings. Love is not just a nice feeling you have for somebody else, and hatred isn't just a feeling. There's feelings, yes, there are attitudes, and there are actions. So both hatred and love consist of, of this flowing together of our, our feelings we have, the attitudes we have, and the actions that flow from them. The second thing that both hatred and love have in common is that they are actions with consequences. When you hate or when you love, it has an impact, it has an effect, it makes a difference. But hate is not just one thing and love is not just one thing. There are many kinds of hate, depending on the situation, on the relationship, on the context. There are different kinds of love, depending on what kind of relationship you're talking about. But what is true about all these forms of hatred is that they are negative. They are destructive. They disrespect. They want to hurt. Whereas all the, the forms of love are positive and constructive. They are actions that want to enhance, that want to help, that want to respect the other, not disrespect and hurt and harm. And I think we must also say that hate is not the only opposite of love. Love has other opposites, like indifference. If we do nothing, it is also the opposite of love. We don't actually have to hate someone to depart from the way of love. We can just do nothing and be apathetic and walk away or look the other way, like the priest and the Levite, and still not act in love. Now, the effects of hate and love produces a response. Hate always produces a response. Love produces a response. It has an effect. So what are the effects of hate? The verse says to us, hatred stirs up strife, conflict. Hatred stirs up conflict. In different Bible translations, the, the, the exact same words are not used. So it's negative feelings and attitudes and actions that calls forth, that stirs up conflict. So when I insult you, you insult me back. Then I insult you worse and then you insult me worse. And it, it, it creates just a cycle of insult. When I hit you, you hit me back and I hit you worse. 
and it's a spiral of violence, a spiral of fighting that becomes bigger and bigger and often spirals completely out of control so that people use serious violence and even kill each other. If I keep on making negative remarks about you, if I keep on putting you down, keep on making sarcastic remarks when you're trying to do something, I can slowly break you down or you can slowly break my spirit down so that I don't care, love myself or regard myself as, as important or valuable. And then one day it explodes because that violence has been deeply embedded and ingrained and, it, and if you haven't responded, then one day it creates a big conflict and a big explosion. So negative, negativity, negative feelings, hatred, disrespect, creates violence, creates conflict. Why? Because all of us as human beings have dignity, have worth, have a sense of importance, a sense of honor. So if we, if we are constantly attacked or criticized or put down, uh, then we, we hit back. We want to, we don't accept being treated like dirt. We stand up for ourselves. So it's natural, it's human to respond, to react to negativity. How does love work? Love covers over all wrongs, covers all transgressions, some other Bible translations say. Love does not provoke negative responses. It doesn't provoke strife. It doesn't cause violence. Love covers. It covers over. It cares. It doesn't scratch open old wounds to make them bleed again. It bandages wounds. It covers up. It covers, not that, doesn't cover up. It covers over. It surrounds, it embraces. But not only wounds. Love doesn't only cover wounds. Love also covers sins and transgressions and wrongs, as, we, as this verse says. Now, so how does love cover up wrongs? Whose wrongs? Well, Proverbs 15 helps us. Because Proverbs 15 says, verse 18, the one we read, says the, a hot-tempered person stirs up conflict, but the one who is patient calms a quarrel. The one who is patient calms a quarrel. Love covers up wrongs. In other words, hatred creates conflict, but love often doesn't, doesn't just start a conflict, but it, takes an, it, it responds to an existing conflict, by calming it down, by covering it over, by calming it. So strife, which was already there, which is an existing quarrel, an existing fight or a division, love comes into that strife and covers it over, settles it down, calm, creates calmness. The hot-headed, angry person who, who can only make things worse is the opposite of the person who wants to calm the situation down and cover the antagonism, cool it down so that people can mediate. So, so love mediates in conflict. It reduces the level of conflict and negativity that people have towards each other. It makes things better. That's what love does. It improves the situation. Love is slow to anger. This word translated here as uh, the one who is patient. The Hebrew expression says the one who is slow to anger, who doesn't jump into conclusions and jump into angry, uh, violent reactions. In 1 Peter 4 we read that we should love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. So that's what love does as opposed to hate. And these are two ways set before us on this Valentine's Day. So let's move then to, to marriage, to romantic love, to family life. 
And I know that there are a number of people listening to me who are not married, who are not in loving or caring relationships, single parents, uh, single people who are not parents. So I'm not trying to exclude you. I think what, what these passages, these two Proverbs have said, are applicable to everyone, whether you're married or not, whether you are in a loving relationship or not. But for Valentine's Day, this wonderfully romantic one day in the year, like all special days, it's not meant to be the only day that you must show love to your lover, to your special person in your life. It's mainly symbolic. It reminds us, like Mother's Day and Father's Day and other special days, that every day of the year, every week of the year, we have to be specially kind to, to our special people, to our loved ones. So if we give flowers or chocolates or treats or cards or other gifts or go out for a meal, that doesn't mean that this is the only thing to do. This is just setting in a symbolic example of what our life together should be all about. Appreciative, kind, gentle, compassionate, making things better, covering over the wrongs, not stirring up strife, but covering over the negativities in order to improve the situation, to make it better. So everyone in a loving partnership for more than six months will know that romance is not enough to sustain a relationship. As wonderful and enjoyable as it is to kiss and to make love, we need more than desire to make us both happy and to keep us together. We need respect, we need loyalty, we need commitment, we need care. Otherwise, our red-hot romance can end in ice-cold indifference or in ice-cold hatred and in separation or even in domestic violence. So we need the kind of love that the Proverbs, these two Proverbs speak about. And you know, there's that, that terrible chapter in the Bible, 2 Samuel 13, where, where Amnon rapes his sister Tamar. And when you read there, it says in, in the first verse, he fell in love with his sister. And he says, I'm in love with Tamar. And then after he forced himself on her and raped her, suddenly you read that he hated her. And I just want to read... That, that verse, because it underlines this very clearly. Then Amnon hated her with intense hatred. In fact, he hated her more than he had loved her. Amnon said to her, get up and get out. So the desire that Amnon had for Tamar that he had fallen in love with and had then sexually abused, suddenly that desire turns around and becomes hatred and he throws her out of his house. That's what can happen to a romance which doesn't have stability, which doesn't have loyalty, which is not embedded in a relationship of care and, and love, the kind of love that covers over, the kind of love that calms down situations. You see how fervent desire can lead to rape and abuse. Date rapes, all very romantic, Valentine's Day, but in the end, someone abuses someone else. And how quickly that desire can switch to hatred and rejection, get out. So when we celebrate romantic love today with red hearts and cards and chocolates and flowers, let's remember that this beautiful aspect of love is only part of love. The face-to-face -face fun we have with each other, and which is wonderful to have, must be complemented and strengthened and built on the foundation of shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder loyalty and commitment to walk down the same road together, hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder, to have the same goals, the same values. 
the same joys and to hold each other's hand and to help and support each other. And if the one falls, the other one helps him up or helps her up because love covers over wrongs, covers over weaknesses, covers bandages wounds, doesn't stir up, doesn't antagonize, doesn't insult, doesn't humiliate, but walks with. So we need more than making love. We need love. The kind of love that covers over wrongs, that calms down strife, that stays at its post. Oh, I should have read. Uh, you can go and read Ecclesiastes 10 verse 4. I'm not going to read it now. Uh, it just also uh, adds to this. It says, when the king is unhappy with you, stay at your post, because calmness can kind of overcome many wrongs. So you get that same idea. Even if people are negative to, towards you, stay at your post and remain calm, act lovingly. But to cover over wrongs also means to forgive. Love covers over transgressions. It doesn't cover up injustice. It doesn't cover up dishonesty and disrespect. But it forgives. It can, it can cover over the bad things that happened between us. But love can be destroyed. I don't think we should say you, you have to remain in that relationship, whatever happens, just you have to be loyal. Love can be destroyed by violence and domestic abuse and by constant harassment. And then it is the loving thing to get out. But that must always be a last resort. We should always try in loving each other, being shoulder to shoulder to each other, to cover those wrongs, but also then to heal those wrongs, and to repent of the wrongs that we have done towards each other. So covering over the wrongs also means leaving them behind for the sake of a new, fresh beginning, a new relationship. If love isn't mutual, both ways, two ways, then it's not love. Then it is abuse. Then it is taking advantage of, then it's using someone. Our love needs to grow and to mature and to deepen. So Valentine's Day calls us to romantic love and to loyalty love. The love that would cover, that would, that would support, that would, sh that would be mutual, and we grow together from year to year and from day to day. But where do we learn to love like this? From our parents, or guardians, or grandparents, or uncles, whoever grew us up. If we bond with them and if they embrace us and they bond with us and feed us, if they cover us, if they love us unconditionally, if they cover us with blankets so that we're not cold when we sleep, if they cover us with clothes so that we are comfortable and feel good about ourselves, if they cover us with kindness and patience, then we can grow up to cover up cover over others, to love others in this kind of relationship. So our most important task as parents, if we are parents, brothers and sisters, is to love our children with a love that covers them, that covers over their faults, their weaknesses, their, 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 their negative attitudes towards each other as children and towards us sometimes. We need to embrace them and surround them with care. And where do parents, where do we as parents learn to love like that so that we can cover love with a covering love over our children and one another in marriage and in partnership? From the love of God for us, we can share such love only when we receive such love from God, from one another and from God. So when the Lord Jesus prayed on the cross, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. His life was filled with that love that covers, covers over wrongs and transgressions. The love that forgives, forgives sins, forgives hatred, forgives negativity. 
It is when we open our hearts and lives to God's love given to us in the cross, the life, the cross, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that we can begin to be transformed more and more into God's image, that we can learn to love with a giving love, with a covering love. Hatred stirs up conflict. Love covers over all wrongs. Love one another deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Sisters and brothers, happy Valentine's Day to you. Happy life to you, Valentine's life to you. That we may love those who are special to us, who are close to us, with the love that covers. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, loving God, God of the Lord Jesus Christ, God of the cross of Calvary and the open grave in the garden, we open our hearts and lives that you may fill us with your love. That love that covers our sins, that binds our wounds, that transforms our lives, so that we may have the patience and the courage and the humility to love each other with that love that covers, that covers over wrongs, that bandages wounds, that heals broken relationships. Give us the joy, we pray, Lord, in our in our romantic relationships, in our marriages, in our families, so that we may experience your all-encompassing, all-embracing love that you have shown to us in Jesus, particularly on the cross, and that you pour out into our hearts through your Holy Spirit. We pray this in his name and to his glory, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, um, no announcements. The Church Council will tell us if and when we will start worshipping together again in Bosman Street. If that's going to happen soon, we wait for an announcement from the Church Council. In the meantime, let's be safe, let's be careful, let's look after each other, let's look after ourselves in this uh, COVID uh, pandemic. Let's do our best not to be irresponsible but to be a caring, loving community of the Lord, disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let me pronounce the benediction and open your hearts to receive the blessing from God. The affirming love of God our Creator, the reconciling love of Christ our Saviour, and the empowering and the, the Transforming power of the Holy Spirit, our sanctifier, be with you now and forever. Amen.